Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part two of my Python 2.7 tutorial. Today, I'm going to cover tuples, lists, and dictionary variable types. A tuple list and a dictionary are very similar to what are called arrays in other programming languages. Basically, what an array is, or any of these guys, is a bunch of boxes that can hold any type of value. So they can hold strings, they can hold numbers, floats, individual characters, Boolean values, anything that you want to put into them. And each of these locations is referenced by what's called an index. You could think of it as the address or the of the location of the individual variable value that is stored inside of one of these guys. So if you wanted to access, for example, let's say you created a tuple or a list that was called customer and you wanted to access the value that is stored in the index of zero that would be Bob. You could just simply put zero inside of square brackets. And if you had a print in front of customers, square brackets with a zero in the middle, it would print out the value of Bob to the screen. And you can say that it would proceed upwards in indexes. But you could also reference the last value inside of the tuple or list by using negative one, negative two, negative three and so forth. So you can see here examples of that. So what's really the difference between a tuple and a list? The difference is once you define a tuple and give it values, you cannot go in and change these values on an individual basis. However, with a list you can. And lists also have a whole bunch of other powerful functions you can mess around with. And on top of that, a tuple is what is called immutable. If you ever hear that fancy word, it just means can't be changed. Now you can completely change every value in here all at one time, and I'm going to show you how to do that, but you cannot change these on an individual basis. So what's the difference between a tuple and a list and a dictionary? Dictionaries have keys and values. So instead of a index, a dictionary has an actual thing we call a key, which is just a string that represents the value that is held inside of the dictionary. But let's get into actual coding. Here I am back inside of Eclipse. I'm going to show you exactly how to create a tuple. This is just an arbitrary variable name. You don't have to begin it with the word tuple. And let's say I want to put my name in here and I want to put an integer, which is my age and the city I live in and the state I live in. Now, if I print this to screen, you can see it prints out all this information I put inside here. But if I wanted to instead print out just my name using indexes, you can see it does that. And I can also come in here and reference all the other indexes individually. One thing that's kind of weird about tuples is, let's say you wanted to actually create a tuple that has only one value. You would define it by like this. You have to put this extra comma in here. So that's how you would put an individual variable inside of a tuple. Let's say also you wanted to change this string into a tuple. How would you do that with the tuple function? Right like that. Now, if you print to screen, you can see that all those individual values are broken apart. So that's how you would turn a string into a tuple. And of course, you could put the variable name of a string in here instead of the string itself. And then you have things called slices. And pretty much what that is, it, you can actually reference the beginning and the ending index for anything you would want to put to screen. So let's say I take tuple ex2 and I want to print to screen all of the indexes starting with zero and up to but not including the value stored in the second index. You can see that's exactly what it did. This being the zero index and this being the one. Remember it prints up to but not including the second index, C being the second index. And that's pretty much all you can do with tuples. There are no other methods. There's really nothing else to a tuple. So let's get into lists. How would you create a list? You just change the brackets. So instead of that round bracket, you use a square bracket just like this. And to prove that this is a list, I just put in the type function, which you saw in the previous tutorial, but I should probably call this list example so this doesn't get confusing for you. Now I'm going to show you all the things you can do with these guys, and there are many. Let's say you can also cut slices off just like we did previously with the tuple, of course, as you can see, I just did right there. And all this code's on my website, newthinktank.com, by the way, if you want that. You can also print the screen. You could also do this with tuples. The last value by referencing the last index, and there it is. So that's how you would access the last value. And let's say I go in here and I actually create number square brackets. 
one. Okay, so I just created a list that's numbers one through n. And let's say I want to print the last three digits. How would I do that? This is something you just really have to start to memorize, kind of. And the best way to do that is to code. So if I want to print to screen the last three values in here, I would start it off with negative three. So what it's doing is it's actually going opposite direction and it will print to screen those last three digits. See, eight, nine, ten. And of course, if you wanted to print to screen the first three digits, you put the colon followed by the three, and it prints out the first three digits that are available. And let's say also that you would like to start printing to screen, starting with the second index in this list up to the very last index in this list and skip every other number. How would you do that? Real simple. One, start at index one through index 10, and then put in how many indexes you want to skip each. And you can see it prints out all of the even numbers for you. If you want to see how long a list is, it's print len function list num, see, 10 indexes. And if you wanted to see the minimum value stored, use the min function, one. And if you want to see the maximum value stored, use the max function. So these are just a whole bunch of little random sort of things you can do inside of Python with lists. I'm going to go in here and start playing around with strings. So, so you know here, this is how you would turn a string into a list. Use the list function, just like we did with the tuple function. And let's say I want to take Fred, bring him in here. Say it broke Fred's each individual letter and put them on in their own individual boxes. Now let's say I want to go in here and actually add the two characters dy to the end of that. How would I do that? I would define list name, put a bracket, and say from the index 4 onwards, I want to add this string to that list. And you see it automatically put dy at the end of that list. If I then wanted to join these guys and print it out Freddy as a string, what I would do is I'm just going to put two blank quotes in here. And I'm going to use what's called the join function and stick list name inside of there. You can see it prints it out as a string instead of printing it out as a list. You just saw how I added two additional indexes to the list. There's also other multiple different ways you can play around with these guys. Here I'm going to create another list. One, two, three, four. And let's say I wanted to replace the value in index one with a five. Index one is this two. How do I do that? It's real simple. And as you proceed through this tutorial, you're going to start to really under understand it because I'm going to give you a ton and tons and tons of examples. See? Went in and replaced the two. And you could also just delete the whole entire thing. So let's say I wanted to delete the value in index. I'm just going to jump up here, type in DEL, and I want to delete that guy right there. And if I print it out the screen, you can see that it went in there and deleted the value that was in the second index spot. So there's just a couple more things. Now I'm going to show you a bunch of different methods or functions you can use. Like let's say you wanted to add the word joy or the name joy to the end of this list. How would you do that? Well, you would just type in list example, append. And you can see that it appended that on there. And if you wanted to remove that value you just put inside of there, let's use the remove function. And you can remove things by stating exactly what you want to remove. You could say I added it and then I took it out. Or you could come in here and remove it based off of the index position. And you can see that it knocked off PA also. Remember index 0, 1, 2, 3. So here it knocked off the, the value that was stored in index 3 with this remove command. So those are two different ways to remove things from lists. And let's say you wanted to jump in here and add a value into the list in the second index spot. It'll automatically make room for you. So let's say I want to put PA in the second spot. And remember 0, 1, 2, just put it in there and it automatically move Pittsburgh over. It didn't delete it. And let's create a new list. And let's just throw in a bunch of random letters. So it's just a bunch of letters in no discernible order. Now, I'm going to show you how to sort these in alphabetical order real easily, just like that. And if we print that to screen, you can see that it put them all in alphabetical order for you. Just by tacking that on, just by running that function, it automatically jumps in there and fixes that up for you.
Another neat thing you can do with lists, and this will be the last example, is let's say I wanted to create a multi-dimensional list, meaning it's going to have multiple different values stored. It would be probably easier to understand just by looking at it here. A, B, C. I can place values inside of a list, just like you have here, so maybe it looks a little bit complicated. I could have, like for example, my name, my neighbor's name, my wife's name, ages, and all these other different things. And, and of course, don't forget to put the commas here. And as you can see, what I did was I said I want to remove the letter or print the letter to the screen that lies in the second index. So this would be 0, 1, 2. And inside of that area, I want the first index inside of this index little box. And that's the reason why it printed up H. So that's my explanation and a ton of examples on how to use tuples and lists inside of Python. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below in the next tutorial, which will be coming out today. I will go over strings and dictionaries. Till next time.